In this video, I want to talk about the proof reason that all right angles are congruent. This is a little bit of a specialty reason. It doesn't come up very often, but you're going to want to have it in your toolkit because when you need it, it's the only thing that's going to solve the problem for you. Let's take a look at a proof. All right, in this diagram, I've got this quadrilateral, which is a four-sided polygon, and I'm given that AD is perpendicular to AB. That symbol there means that these two line segments form right angles where they meet. Um, so that symbol hopefully makes you a little th think a little bit about a corner. Uh, we know that BC is perpendicular to CD and that AD is congruent to BC. So you see I've already listed those three givens on the proof. And we need to prove these two triangles are congruent. You notice I put that down at the bottom of my proof. So now I only have to fill in the middle of the proof. So when we've got these statements, let's mark up the diagram with it. So AD is, is perpendicular to AB. To talk about perpendicular, I want to put a little bracket there. So this looks like a square here. And I've got the same thing where BC intersects CD. So since I've got these perpendicular sides, since I know these right angles are in the diagram, I can conclude how big is a right angle. A right angle has to be 90 degrees. If you know something is a right angle, there's only one degree measure it can have. Like acute angles, you could have you know, a 45 degree angle or a 30 degree angle or a 79 degree angle. Those are all acute angles, but there's only one choice for a right angle. And so since these two angles are both 90 degrees, they must be congruent to each other. And so the way we're going to mark that on the proof is we're going to say, since those two angles are congruent to each other, how would we name them? Well, we could name them with three letter things. Could we use one letter in this case to talk about these angles? We can, because there's only one angle that has A as its vertex in this diagram. And so we can just say angle A, and the same thing is true for angle C. And the reason for this is because all right angles are congruent. OK, and notice what I had above me in the proof. So above here in the proof, I had these two statements about perpendicular connections between lines. So that's what kind of tipped me off. Since I know there's perpendicular lines in here, I know there are going to be some right angles. And so I know that all of those are going to be congruent. So that's the tip off. When I see connections about perpendicular lines in a proof, I know that I'm going to be leaning towards all right angles are congruent as one of my reasons. OK, there aren't many other places where that pops up. So just be on the lookout for that one thing. And if you see perpendicular lines, you're almost certainly going to want to know that all right angles are congruent. If you don't see perpendicular signs, it's probably not going to pop up in your proof at all.